I've been watching the China trade story. Markets always have a hard time handicapping such a topic. There's so much opaque uh, topics related to those that are proactive in the talks. But I have noticed that the dollar is screaming against the Chinese currency. Were there some institutions or finance structures more surprised in China than we were in the U.S. with this turn that this deal has taken? So I think both sides are needy. That's why we think we ultimately get to, the, to a deal. The issue is which side thinks the other side is needier. And for a while, I think last week, coming into the beginning of the week, this week, China felt a little bit better about its macro economy, felt a little bit better uh, about uh, finance and its fiscal stimulus, and it was probably letting its, its currency slide a little bit. Um, I got you. At the, now, you know, at and the, the other thing the weird is, Vincent, you write a lot about the Fed, and I love reading it. This has a strange twist. The, the one excuse now that we're hearing that China blinked is because of the way Trump and his people were talking about we need to have an ease. They question the economy. So in, in a way, this all comes back to that kind of weird relationship the president has with the Fed. You want to weigh in on that? So no, neither side of the trade negotiation really understands the other side. And it seems like Chinese leadership took the pre president, what they view as unprecedented criticism of the central bank as showing a real sign of concern about the macro economy. Um, I think the script on our side is the president likes to criticize the, centra, the, the Federal Reserve. Uh, he's essentially buying himself an option. Uh, if something goes wrong in the economy, he won't blame uh, his uh, 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 erratic trade negotiating style. He won't blame the uncertainty he's creating. He'll blame Jay Powell. And he's going to continue to leave those markers down as, uh, as, as, because that's his insurance policy. I got you, Vincent, but we're basically out of time. One quick question. You know, at the end of last year, everything looked horrible with the markets, but yet the data that came in for first quarter was solid. Could it be the same with this? In other words, markets are having a hissy fit here, but maybe the data here and China, when it ultimately comes out for this time, will look better than we think, and that'll make the markets heal better? But is that a possibility? Your final thought. Uh, markets views always swing in a much higher amplitude than the reality. Everybody panicked in December going into January about the global economy. We're actually doing pretty well. Uh, everybody's gone back and forth on a very, very wide margin about, about their views on, on bilateral negotiations. You're really supposed to smooth through those if you have a medium to longer term perspective.